Rattler with a spotty cap and the pink. Excited Angel about to make a big run in the straight here as well. Rod Griffiths, two and a half years in Ireland. Perhaps this has been an Irish week. And this, uh, despite Stephen King's five yesterday, almost was the ride of the day. Well, it was a very slowly run race. And as you can see, Telesto charging up there along the inside, just starting to hit top gear. And uh, it would have finished much, much closer had, it, had he not been checked now. Just here he is. He runs completely out of room and probably cost him second place. Gee, Primus, he's a decent horse, and he to, to win the new market in the one year and the, and the old Honda, Nissan and George Adams. Just the Avenue did it recently, but he did it the other way around. He'd won the mile race and went back and won the six. Stephen, what about Burst? Burst, she just over raced a little bit, Max. She, uh, she never settled and uh, she just worked too hard early. Is there another win in her? I think so. She's just got to learn to relax. OK, you relaxed in the next on Tour Lord in the Grey Smith. This is one of the easiest wins you'll ever see. How would you like to hop on this with about 300 to go, Stephen? You were sitting back again. Well, absolute last at this stage. This is one of the easiest wins you'll ever have. Yes, that's right. I was always very confident I could win. And uh, as we're round, rounding the turn now, I was sort of, uh, I was just hoping I wouldn't get to the front too early, but he put himself to the front, so I kept going. John, this horse's uh, future? Well, obviously, he's, um, as I've stated a few times, he's got a good Dow pedigree. He's out of a Rangong man. He's lightly raced, and I don't think I've over, you know, overplaced him. Sand down Cup next Saturday, John. Um, we'll look at that dash. He'll be nominated, and I'm not quite sure whether we'll run him. I might keep him for the Eclipse or the Ballarat Cup. Could you put him together with the other winner in the stayers race here? I mean, the different sorts of horses. Which which do you feel has more potential? Well, it's fairly hard. One's a five-year-old. You know, one's got 12 months on on the other. Um, I think Max is right. I thought to hear that Bell's run in the Werribee Cup was really impressive because he quickened, you know, he did lay down and quicken. Yesterday he just felt the pressure a little bit and he ground away. And it's obviously because he's a good, genuine horse that he won. But there are two horses that obviously will be measuring up to some decent race in the autumn. Um, I think um, Torlord will definitely get a mile and a half, maybe even get two mile. Gee, if you can accelerate with, and get a mile and a half and accelerate like that, it puts you into a lot of well, races. by Torfik, the side of Torrific, who won the 89 Cup, you'll get the trip. Well, speaking of trip, uh, let's go back to Thursday. Uh, the Oaks, a contro uh, controversy at the start here. Larry Olsen wasn't happy. Uh, you watch Oaks Day here in the green. Miss it and miss it pretty badly. Back last. She's a maiden going into this race. Uh, Arborea settled down very well in about fifth or sixth placing on the fence. I thought it was one of Shane Dye's very best rides, the way he balanced the filly at the top of the straight and got her into the clear. Oaks Day complete last at this stage. Max and Keith, did you think that there was a grounds for some uh, criticism by Olsen? He wasn't ready at the start. Well, Cassidy felt that uh, he wasn't ready at the start yesterday on Antwerp. We're getting a lot of this not readies at the start uh, from Sydney jockeys in Melbourne. I'm not saying there's any conspiracy there, but uh, uh, perhaps uh, more attention should be paid with the starts. The potential here of Arbery, she's beaten two maidens. I thought the second horse was a terrific run. W where do these horses go from here? I think Arbery will always have the wood on Oaks Day. She's gone through the clean sweet, Bruce, the Thousand Guineas, the Wakeful and the Oaks. She's the best filly. Oh, yes, and Clary Connors has done a remarkable job. But, John, the quality of these staying fillies, what's your opinion? Well, I think, um, apart from the winner, I think they're a pretty even group, really. Mm. Are you saying they're even or ordinary, John? Well, when you see a maiden who's been beaten at Hawkesbury run second like she did, obviously she gets 25. Um, I think, you know, you've got to question the others, really. Well, I'll tell you one that wasn't even or ordinary was Gold Bros and the Lynn Lithgow. Was this some sort of a run? Gee, Max, you might have Sydney a horse form. here. <laughs> oh, the Sydney form. Did I tell you about three weeks ago or a month we had a horse here, Bruce? I'm not coming in on the ground. Yeah, no, you just stay where you are, right. Max. Max, we keep a record of all your predictions. This might be a credit for you, but gee, the list of debits is a long one. Well, there, there are a few there. There are a few there, I will admit, but not when it comes to Sydney form. Irish form, I'm a bit rusty on. <laughs> John, your feelings about Gold Bros? He's a good horse and he won really impressive and um, you can't take it away from him. Um, he's obviously shown, you know, he's been in his best in Sydney because naturally he's raced there mostly, but he is really impressive. He'd probably run a, run a really big race in a good race in the autumn. And just wrapping up, Bart's coming up and Brent Thompson after the break to talk about the Melbourne Cup. You were quoted as saying that the Group 3 horses in Europe are as good as our Group 1 horses. Well, I think the European form, particularly the British forms, it's better form. and. Um, um, I think what happened on Tuesday was a great thing. Great thing for the cup. It mightn't have been, you know, the best thing for our breeding industry, but it was a great thing for the cup. It's upgraded the cup. It's made it an international event now. And I think uh, when they can revise, you know, your handicapping system, um, I think it'll be great and it'll be a fairer, be a better for the Australasian owner and trainer. And Kingy, would great vintage have won on a dry track? I don't think it would have been, been uh, vintage crop 
Bruce, but um, she would have run a lot closer. OK. I'm sure Bart would agree with you. John, well done. Congratulations. You. you too, Thank Stephen. You Tremendous carnival. Thank you. Max and Keith, don't go away. Bart Cummings and Brent Thompson join us after this break. is the most prized place in Australian racing. The Irish National, national Anthem with uh, Vintage Crop winning the Melbourne Cup. Now, Max was bragging just before the break about, ah, oh, tipped your goal, bros, and all that. Well, he's not always, right? Let's go back about five weeks <laughs> after Keith had observed Vintage Crop's winning the St. Ledger Stakes, and this is what happened on Sports World. Well, Vintage Crop has now had three wins at 2,800 metres. He's won at 3,200 metres, 3,600 metres. And after that race, his owner, Michael Smirnoff, said, next stop, Melbourne. So this might be the first horse in the 133-year history, the first Northern Hemisphere trained horse to win the Melbourne Cup. Well, he's not in the market. Max is having a, a laugh back there. He's not in the market at the moment, uh, Max. Uh, so no. You don't think he can win, Max? No, well, look, Keith can be on Vintage Crop and that jockey flotting uh, flies. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'd just like to see his arm with Mick Dittman just, just chasing him up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who put that on, but gee, I want to well, congratulate you know the Nark. <laughs> you, want to put, you know who put it on. Unfortunately, Mick Dittman didn't get close enough. But I will say this, I will say this. One win does not make the world's greatest jockey, but Canaan is definitely in the top three. Well, if he's not the best, he's the best, best jockey. He's the best fly swatter, Max. <laughs> he didn't have to swat any fly. Perhaps you no. should employ him to hang around you, Max. <laughs> well, I've got to say one thing. When we did our tips last week, Max's horse finished fourth. I don't get on to mine, tips. Come on, give me a mine break. Was, mine was 21st, and my old mate here, Keithy, it ran last. Well, it did take <laughs> 23 <laughs> horses to beat him. <laughs> Let, let's get on with the job. Um, Brent Thompson has joined us this morning, a well-known international rider who's had tremendous success not only in Australia but uh, overseas. Brent, welcome to the program. You going to talk to us, Brent? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And Bart Cummings, Bart, who has joined us from Leilani, Leilani Lodge in Sydney this morning. Welcome, Bart. Good morning. And one of the reasons we wanted you in, obviously, Bart, is because you've made so many headlines this week. Uh, restructuring the VRC, telling them exactly when they should have the handicapping and what went wrong from an Australian point of view. Bart, it's been suggested you've been a poor loser this week. Do you think you've been taken out of context? I believe so. I, uh, I didn't make that comment. I think a member of the VRC made that. But I understand he's bought $5 million of horses that's worth no good at all. You're talking about uh, changing when the handicap should be released, Bart? Correct. But you still feel the vintage crop was very well handicapped? Oh, well, if you had of uh, the weights that it came out after the Irish and Ledger, um, I think we all believe that the horse would have uh, received four to five kilos more. And uh, I don't think that's unreasonable in assuming that. And, and Bart, what about the statement that you were attributed to and a couple of other trainers thinking that uh, these two horses had very little chance uh, you know a month or two before the melbourne cup well i think there was a um, a, 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 a great number of people who thought that uh, that have to be uh, in training and uh, acclimatized and racing in australia but that proved to be wrong uh, we're all clever in hindsight aren't we and we can all be wrong bart can't <laughs> well, yes max <laughs> well, but, but and but you are responsible for one of the greatest quotes in history when you said, geez, we gave those Poms a 200-year start, now we're 100 years ahead of them. Remember that one? We slipped a little <laughs> last week. <laughs> but will this open the floodgates? How do you set your race at the international level? Well, they tell me it cost about 60 to 80,000 per horse to bring them to Australia. Uh, that might... Uh, well, I don't suppose it make much difference to the, uh, the sheikhs and um, the wealthy people in the Northern Hemisphere. And if so, that could well be because our prize money is much superior to most of that in Europe. Australian prize money alone is higher than the whole of Europe put together. But wouldn't you say it was a, a very fine training feat by Dermot Weld to bring that horse over here, get him acclimatised, get him so good? I believe he was a week short, but he was still 
quite a few lengths better than the best that we could produce. One of the most cleverest men in the world, I'd say. But how many of these horses are over there, over in Ireland or England or Europe, that are capable of coming out here and winning our cup? We have a few Van de Cross and the Galilee and various uh, sprinkling of champions, but uh, the depth of the Northern Hemisphere is far, far more um, higher and deeper than we have in this country. They might have five or six Galileys a season. We're lucky to have one in every 20 years. Brent, what's your feeling on that? I mean, you've ridden some of the very best horses in Europe and, uh, and uh, in France and in Ireland. Um, exactly what uh, Bart, Bart said. I mean, they, they have a... Uh, a, uh, every season they have a handful of those horses and uh, I mean to put it uh, bluntly um, I mean the reason for that should should be correct because we ra race great-grandsons of say let's use Northern Dancer for, for, for an example and uh, they race sons of um, just to put it at its perspective. Dermot Wells said he's got 80 to 100 horses and he said he picked the right one to win our cup I wonder how many he could have chosen from, would he have uh, another dozen people of doing that, Brent? Well, Bennett Will would have a string of close on between, between 150 to 200 horses. So some of their um, middle of the range handicappers would probably be still capable of, of uh, running a good race in a Melbourne Cup. And um, uh, it's not being unfair, it's just, just you know, put it, in, put it in line here. But aren't we, aren't we just getting off the track here? Isn't, wouldn't the point be, Brent, getting a good horse and getting him over here to reproduce his best form? Now, we've had top-class horses come from Europe before, probably better horses than vintage crop, and they, they've run like camels. The point is to get them over here and get them acclimatised. Obviously, that must be the knack. Well, you know, I've, uh, as you know, Max, I've ridden a horse this season, uh, Runyon. Um, Runyon, uh, he's best form was probably at uh, group, uh, he ran in group group uh, one level and ran ran fourth I think uh, behind uh, Opera House and he, he, he'll be one of the favourites for the Japan Cup but um, he, he's came, came he, 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 they brought him down here and he acclimatised quite well given a, a period of time and obviously with a you know there's a percentage of horses that do it and do it well and there's a percentage that don't um, uh, he, he, you know, he's got the sun on his back and he's improved and uh, I, I believe he's quite outstanding. I think we should get other things into perspective. I thought it was a, a Melbourne Cup that was probably below average. There were so many yeah. good, our good horses all failed. The horses yeah, like Air Seattle and the Phantom mm. and, and uh, Sub-Zero out of the race and one that just escaped, or our Pompeii was a rank failure. Drum Taps has finished ninth, yeah. but Vintage Cop... Now, the way this horse accelerates here was one of the most exciting things I've seen on yeah. the race Unless course. Unless Tiakau Nick in front, this would have been the first Melbourne Cup for success for a, for a woman trainer, Gay Waterhouse, would have been the longest price ever, but he comes vintage crop. This is Michael Canane who has he, he puts it, he puts it away uh, here, success he? in, the, in, in the English Derby and the Ark, and here he is swatting to success in the Cup as well. He's a great rider. I'll leave Max alone. But how do you compare vintage crop with some of, I mean, Galilee, Let's Elope, uh, been two of the great cup winners uh, of the last 30 years. Do you compare this bloke favourably? I think he's very close to their ability. And um, if he was racing in Australia, uh, out, continued on to the autumn, I think he'd clean up the whole lot. He'd be hard to beat in the cup hurdle but too, I'd love to get him on he'd a... win the cup hurdle for sure. <laughs> I'd love to get him on a fast track against Let's Elope with the same weights they've had in the Melbourne Cup. I think the trainer suggested if it was a dry track on Tuesday, he would have won much easier, mate. Yeah, sometimes they, what trainers suggest don't always work out. Leave me out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But um, we do have a special presentation for you that uh, Keith and uh, Keith's uh, family have been heavily involved in. So, uh, yes, Keith? but th this is uh, to uh, thank you for your time on Cup E for, for signing the limited edition of Prince of the Dominators yourself, Colin Hayes and Tommy Smith. So a special first uh, number for you. And there's a contact number there to make inquiries. Tell us about this, Keith. There's only 200 printed. Uh, John Hillier did them, my son, actually. And uh, he's uh, recaptured the, the three dominators and trainers, as we know them best. And uh, each of the three have signed each of the 200 copies there, Bruce. Perhaps a magnificent work, Bruce. Fortunately, John throws to the dam. Yes, he, yes he, well, he was pretty well bred, wasn't he? <laughs> We might have to do one with John Maher and Stephen King after <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Brent, thanks for coming in. Great, thank you. Best of luck. And Bart, thank you. And uh, I know you're going to cherish uh, that gift that, uh, that uh, Keith passed on to you there.
Good. Thanks very much. Good. Good on you, Bart, Bart Cummings. Max, thank you for all your efforts during the spring, and obviously we'll talk to you in Sydney next week. Yes, that'll be my pleasure. Okay, Dermot World made a comment, Bruce, that uh, our trainers shouldn't be negative. They should now go and attack the overseas races, and I think that's good advice, because this was a great Melbourne Cup result. Why not? Yeah. A break. Next up, surfing. Thank you.